بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين حمدا كثيرا والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Honestly, brothers and sisters, today is the best night for me so far this Ramadan because I'm overwhelmed with happiness to see this new building, mashallah tabarakallah. I've been coming here for the last um, 10 years approximately and uh, nearly every Ramadan we come here, alhamdulillah, and mashallah to see us praying here today, mashallah, especially the fact that this building is 100% funded and supported by the local community. 10 years ago, this place was known as a small quiet town in the outskirts of Manchester, but look at it today, alhamdulillah. Um, you brothers and sisters, you always welcome your, your guests and you support your local masjid and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you and reward you and to make this building a building that is built upon taqwa. Say ameen. <laughs> Sheikh Abid, may Allah bless him, asked me to, to share a reminder and I wanted to speak about our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the Prophet وسلم, that he has amazing, beautiful characteristics. You, O Messenger of Allah, have the greatest of manners. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُوا اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ in the Messenger of Allah, you have the best example, the best role model for us to follow, for those who believe in, in Allah in the last day. Now, fasting in the month of Ramadan, as siyam linguistically, siyam means al-imsak. Imsak means to refrain, to hold yourself. So it means to hold yourself from eating and drinking. But fasting is much more than that. Fasting has been prescribed so that we can gain taqwa. So not only do we refrain from what is originally halal, like food and water, but rather we should refrain from all types of bad characteristics. And that when the Prophet ﷺ described taqwa, which is the objective of Ramadan, he ﷺ, he said, Have taqwa of Allah, Wherever you are, at all times, in Ramadan, outside Ramadan, in private, at home, when you're traveling, اتَّقِ اللَّهِ حِيثُ مَا كُنْتْ وَأَتْبِعِ السَّيِّئَ الْحَسَنَةَ تَمْحُهَا وَخَالِقِ النَّاسِ بِخُلِقٍ حَسَنٍ He shows us three types of wasaya, three types of advice to have taqwa, which is the haq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his right. And also he teaches us how to deal with ourselves, with our nafs. That if we make a mistake and we sin, what do we do? We do tawbah, we repent, and we follow that sin with a good deed, that good deed would erase the sin. وَخَالِقِ nas, And this is what I wanted to focus on. وَخَالِقِ nas بِخُلِقٍ hasan. When you mix with people, when you deal with people, when you do business with them, when you travel, deal with people بِخُلِقٍ with characteristics that are good. Which means from the attributes of taqwa is good akhlaq. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, should I not inform you of what's better than fasting and praying? He ﷺ said, to reconcile between people. And there is a common theme and a common pattern that whenever the Prophet ﷺ starts by saying, Khayrukum, the best of you, the best of the Muslims, who are these people? There's always something in common, which is, the best of you are those who do good, but then they serve others. For example, the best of you are those who are the most anfa'akum, the most beneficial to people. Or khayrakum man ta'allam al-Qur'ana wa'allama. He learns the Qur'an, then he teaches it to others. Or ahabbi al-a'malu ila Allah, from the most beloved deeds to Allah, idkhali surur fi qalbi akhik, to enter joy and happiness in the hearts of another Muslim. Or to be there in need of a brother, to remove a hardship is better than performing i'tikaf in the Prophet's month, in the Prophet's mosque for a whole month, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So from the people that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had really good dealings with and characteristics, he was very successful in engaging with our young people, which in today's time is very difficult. It's very difficult for us 
to engage with young people. There is a, what they call generation gap. There is a youth culture that not many people understand. I saw a video today in Manchester of a fight that happened outside a mosque. And I was disappointed that there was a fight with the youth outside one of the house of Allah. But I was actually disappointed with the response of the management. That they said, we're going to kick out these students who are part of the madrasa. And we're going to make sure that we write references to ensure no other masjid accepts them to be part of the madrasa. This is not going to solve the problem. Rather, the Prophet وسلم, he knew how to speak their language, he knew how to talk to them, and he spent lots of time with the youth. So the first night he came to Medina, imagine a long travel from Mecca. Imagine how sad he was to be exiled from his home city. He looked at the home city of Mecca when he left, he said, Indeed, I love you and you are the most beloved place to me. If it wasn't for my own people making me in exile, I would never leave Mecca. So when he arrived to al Medina, there were so many people that wanted to greet him. But there was this young 10-year-old boy who heard about the Prophet ﷺ. His righteous mother will say stories about the Prophet ﷺ before he sleeps. So he wanted to meet the Prophet. So when he saw the Prophet ﷺ, he came and he hugged the Prophet. The Prophet looked at him and he smiled. And he took his hand and he took him home to stay with him, not for three days like the right of the guest, or for three weeks, or for three years, but for ten years. And this individual is Anas ibn Malik al-Ansari radiallahu anh. And you know what happened within those ten years? He said that I lived with the Prophet, I worked with him. Not once did he tell me off. Not once did he show that he's angry at me. Not once when I didn't do what the Prophet asked me to do, did he say, oh Anas, why did you not do it? And this young man became from the greatest scholars until today. We always say, and Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anh, he's the second biggest narrator of hadith. And from the scholars of Islam who lived for more than 90 years, who gave fatwa and taught the people. This was due to the tarbiyah of the Prophet وسلم, his engagement. And not only Anas, we have Abu Huraira, we have Ibn Abbas, we have Ibn Mas'ud, we have Ali ibn Abi Talib. Most of the people around the Prophet وسلم, were shabab, were youth. And within 30 years after the Prophet وسلم's death, Islam spread all the way to China. Islam spread all the way to the south of Europe. These were the young shabab that when Iman entered their hearts, they spread Islam worldwide. And I think today we can do the same. I think today we need to revive the Sunnah. The Sunnah is not just in the Nafila prayers, but the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, that he engaged with all types of people, even the youth, even the sinners. From amongst the young shabab who came to the Prophet وسلم, who was a sinner, but the Prophet still spoke to him and made dua and gave him advice and made him feel special and important. <coughs> so today, we have many of our youth who are not praying with us in the masjid. We have many of our youth who are not fasting. We have many juvenile prisons, they say 20% are Muslim. We have many mental health hospitals. Again, a large percentage of the patients are Muslims. What is going on? The problem is that we as a community, as Muslims, who Allah blessed us with resources and wealth. We have 3,000 mosques in the UK. We have Muslims who are millionaires. And we have Muslims with wealth. Every one of us have children, we care about them. But if we want Allah to help us with our children, we need to help other people's children as well. We have a responsibility and a duty, as Allah calls us khulafa fil ard, the caretakers, those who are responsible to look after the Muslim youth of this country. And together, we can make this difference. Until today, there is hardly any Muslim youth centers or independent youth organizations that have the resources to serve the Muslim youth and give them the services and the programs that they need. And this is why we are here today, inshallah ta'ala, on behalf of Yasin Youth, who Chido Muslim Association have been supporting for many years. We are trying to, inshallah, this summer, open a three-floor building similar to this, inshallah ta'ala, youth center in London. We came from London and we have 
be negotiating with the landlord to acquire a new building and to fix it up so it's ready for this summer. We also have counselling services and mentoring and advice that we give on a one-to-one -one basis to the youth. We have a youth academy that teaches Arabic, Islamic studies and Quran as well as character development for the youth. We have a youth travel department that took over a thousand young people on Umrah to perform Umrah as well as to participate in a development program. And we also have, walillah alhamd, a sports foundation organizing tournaments and coaching sessions for the youth. We can do much more and we need to do much more, inshallah ta'ala. But we are here today because we want the ta'awun wa ta'awun alil birri wa taqwa to cooperate upon goodness and righteousness and good deeds and taqwa from you all, inshallah ta'ala, to make this dream a reality, bi'idnillah. So please, inshallah, tonight, uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless your wealth and children. Please give a sadaqah for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to make this happen. Again, I thank the management of Muslim uh, Cheeto Muslim Association and the community for all their support. Jazakumullah wa khaira. Subhanakallah wa bihamdika ashharu la ilaha la ant. Astaghfiruku wa atubu alaykum. Wa jazakumullah wa khaira. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.